Hi guys, this is Joe Ross 2K9 with a, another review. Today we're going to be discussing Raw last night. And uh, yeah, so before I get into that, please guys, subscribe, comment, and also follow me on Twitter. And I also get, want you guys to subscribe to Enter the Arena US. And I also want you guys to follow um, these two guys I've been known for a while. Their link is below. They've got some good. Uh, they got some good videos that they've been putting out, and they really need a lot of feedback. And you know they don't really have that many subscribers, so I want you guys to subscribe to them and uh, you know give them a bit of a boost. So before we get into the review today, guys, um, it's just been announced that um, I now have 92 subscribers, and uh, because of that, I'm going to be trying to push to get to 100 subscribers. I was very close to it. Uh, I was very close to it there last year. I kind of gave up on it. So guys, I really want to subscribe. I want to get a hundred subscribers in the next few weeks, so um, so we can get a solid fan base. So yeah, guys, this is Joe Ross 2K9, and we're going to be discussing Raw tonight. And uh, so the first thing that happened. Uh, oh, oh, and also before I want to get in the review as well, uh, there has been a backstage rumor that Brock Lesnar was in a real fight with. Ryback, uh, Skip Sheffield, them two were apparently actually had a real fight. I don't know whether you've noticed, if you look at Ryback's face, his eye is slightly twitched. Um, so Brock Lesnar was apparently in a real fight with Ryback. Now this is just a rumour. Um, if I do, I will try and get it confirmed for you guys, and you will be, you will be the first people to know about it. So uh, I'll be scouring the internet for the news on that, but it is rumoured, and it was also leaked that Brock Lesnar was in a real fight with uh, Ryback. There was a dispute. So guys, uh, we're going to go straight into the Raw review, and uh, yeah, so basically AJ comes out. And uh, AJ comes out to announce you know, the matches that were about to happen. She then gets interrupted by CM Punk. CM Punk comes up and apologizes to AJ for his actions and uh, says that you know he knows about not getting respect. Turns out this guy now is uh, he is now a heel. He, he came in you know at the start he came in with cheers when he started talking, then boo started kicking in. So they're really trying to get heat for CM Punk. So CM Punk says you know he wants the match uh, changed. The triple threat match, even though he's com he never really complained about elimination chambers, and you know Punk has been in triple threat TLC matches, but still, some reason now he he has a problem with it now, which you know it doesn't really the story doesn't really make sense, but you know like I said the one again heel heat on CM Punk, so CM Punk comes out, discusses uh you know basically why he's upset and he then gets interrupted by John Cena. John Cena comes in, gives a crappy promo, talks a load of crap, but then there's something he says, you know, why am I looking to in that way? You know, you look like you basically you turn into a bad guy. So then we had a confrontation, Big Show came out, AJ turned around and says, Enough is enough. I don't wanna have any of this anymore. Uh basically says both of you have got separate matches, CM Punk your match is next. And yeah, that was that segment. Segment was a pretty solid segment. You know, it, it, it's the same usual stuff that happens in Raw. Occasional people come in and out, zigzagging and out, demanding what they want. And really, that sets us up for the three R Raw. So, guys, the one problem I have straight after this match was AJ announced that Punk will be facing someone on Twitter. Now, I voted for Punk Miz. Because I wanted something different. I wanted kind of like two heels to compete against each other. I wanted to see something different. So I voted for uh, Punk Miz. Now, as I'm sure you're all aware of, Punk ended up facing Rey Mysterio. Now, I searched on Twitter. And uh, I searched for worldwide uh, trends. And Miz Punk was trending. It was the only one that was on the board. Uh, Punk Ray and uh, Punk Kane was not on. They were not on at all. Um, so Punk Miz was actually trending worldwide, and you know, yeah, that just goes to show you that you know, WWE are really messed up a lot in regards to uh, the social net media networking, and you know, it, you know, they really have messed it up big time. So a lot of people did actually vote for uh, the Miz. So yeah, we're gonna go straight into the Rey Mysterio and CM Punk match. 
so basically, yeah, it was a pretty solid match. Um, came back and forth. Rey Mysterio hit him with the six one nine, and uh, Punk ends up recovering, and Punk then hits him with a GTS um, to the face. So yeah, the you know it was a it was an all right match. It was a bit quick. I it didn't really it didn't go out long enough. And uh, I think maybe that was because of the advertisements kept coming in and out. But you know, it was it was a very quick match. I would have liked to see a wee bit more. So um, after the uh, after the the after the match, there Alberto Del Rio ends up facing Christian. I actually really like this match. Um, it had a solid amount of time on it. Um, I like Chris the whole thing back and forth with Christian, and. Uh, Ends up Alberto Del Rio ends up taking a shoe off, smacks Christian over the head, and uh, goes for the um the you know the, the the lock. Christian has no choice but to tap out, and Alberto Del Rio ends up winning. Um, I really hate the bar the Barian now Christian again, but you know they have to push, they have to push uh Alberto Del Rio for the World Heavyweight Championship match. And uh, yeah, so after that, a Barrel Del Rio was basically um, Barrel Del Rio was you know celebrating blah blah blah. Then Seamus is on top of the uh, screen. Seamus says, "Oh, by the way, you forgot your uh, your keys in your car." Did a wee Irish joyride, swept his car, and we don't really see Seamus for the rest of Raw until the very end. So it's just really the whole tight thing. They're really trying to push the whole tight. Um, Thing so that's really what Seamus was actually doing. So yeah, Seamus was driving around in his car, and we don't really see him till the end of Raw. Um, so yeah, the next match that happened was Randy Orton versus Big Show. I'm not a big fan of Randy Orton to be honest. I used to be. He's become very boring, very stale, and there's something about there's something very different about him than what you know what happened, but. Um, this is an exclusive. Triple H had an interview with a pro wrestling reviewer, and he actually said what will be the plans for Randy Orton after his suspension. And Triple H actually said that they are considering the legend killer status again for Randy Orton. So that's basically what they're hoping to do. I can see Randy Orton interfering in SummerSlam, maybe trying to, you know. Because he doesn't really have much of a solid rivalry as such. You know, only two weeks into SummerSlam and Randy Orton really hasn't got a um, a proper rivalry. So, yeah, I could really see Randy Orton really turn heel sometime soon. He's become very irrelevant and I think people prefer him as a heel rather than a face. It just doesn't go well. So, the next match is the Primetime Players versus. Primo and Epico. The reason why I like this is simple because WWE now are pushing tag teams finally, and I can really see um, what I really want to see. I don't know whether WWE do this, but I really want to see the prime time players, Epico and Primo, and I want to see uh, R Truth and Kobe Kingston in a triple threat tag team match, um, similar to the TLC match, maybe. Maybe not to copy them. Maybe it would be nice to have a TLC match at SummerSlam, and so that and that means now that they can push tag teams, because that you know that's the one thing WWE are lacking is the uh, tag teams and the Divi the, the uh, Divas division. Sorry. So we're gonna go through what actually happened next. And speaking of Divas, the next match was Kelly Kelly versus Eve. So these guys end these girls so they ended up facing each other. Kelly Kelly um, came back, I don't think anyone really noticed she left, she came back um, a few months, a few months ago and uh, yeah she ended up facing Eve, she beat Eve and uh, I think they're going to try and push Kelly Kelly again, uh, we'd like to see Kelly Kelly either turn heel or I'd like to say, I'd like to see Layla turn heel as well, I think it would be very interesting. Um, because they obviously wanted a div, uh, Divas uh, match in SummerSlam because they were actually planning for Beth Phoenix and uh, Karma to face each other. But obviously that's not going to happen because Karma has now left WWE um, because of you know the uh, personal issues that she has now. 
So guys, yeah, that was that Divas match that happened. Um, the next match that uh, the next segment that happened was the HBK and uh, the HBK and uh, Brock Lesnar segment. I don't really understand why HBK is now in the match at SummerSlam. I really don't see a point in it. I mean, it, it just goes through Triple H is just hiding in the shadows of HBK. It doesn't make any sense. What's the point having HBK in Triple H's corner? What is the point? The match, the original, um, the original match is between two guys, Brock Lesnar and um, Brock Lesnar and uh, Triple H. It's only them two guys and them two guys. A lot of people could say, yeah, but Paul Heyman's involved in it. Paul Heyman really isn't involved in it. He's really just a guy to speak on the mic for Brock Lesnar. So yeah, you know. I don't. I, I, you know, a lot of people think it's nice that HBK is, you know, in SummerSlam. But the fact is, I mean, we've only just seen HBK, you know, at WrestleMania. It, you know, it keeps like, is he, is he there all the time now? You know, I, I kind of think he's that way now that he's there all the time. You know, so um, yeah, Triple H will be um will be with HBK against Brock Lesnar, and obviously I can assume that uh. Paul Heyman will be involved in that match as well. Um, the next match that happened was Dolph Ziggler versus Alex Riley. There's been a lot of controversy with Alex Riley um, in regards to uh, there's been rumours saying that he made remarks towards John Cena, and because of that, that's the reason why he's been moved to NXT. Uh, this match never really showed much of that because Alex Riley ended up beating Dolph Ziggler. Um, once again, Chris Jericho was fantastic on the mic in Coventry, and uh, wearing the whole Dolph Ziggler t-shirt, you know, taking the piss out of Dolph Ziggler, and uh, yeah, Dolph Ziggler looked, kept showing off, and then bang, Alex Riley ends up winning it, and uh, that really sets us up for, uh, that really sets us up for Dolph Ziggler versus Chris Jericho, so um, yeah, you know, I think it's a very good move by WWE, having them two guys face, very, very good. I really like the way that the you know Dolph Ziggler is very talented. Chris Jericho is, is just Chris Jericho, and it's also been announced Chris Jericho will be leaving this month. So um, his contract has expired um, at the end of this month, and uh, I think this will be the last rivalry we have of uh, Chris Jericho. Can't really see him coming back anytime soon, so it, it's very unfortunate. But you know. Obviously, these things happen. So yeah, I've just found out that Chris Jericho's contract has expired on the on this month. It will end this month, and Chris Jericho will no longer be with World Wrestling Entertainment afterwards, unless a contract has been negotiated with. So um, <clears throat> we're gonna go through the other matches that happened, and John Cena against Daniel Bryan. I can I actually like the way Daniel Bryan went after. John Cena. John Cena was very stable in the ring. He wasn't so much flexible in the ring, um, but Daniel Bryan obviously made up for that. Really liked this match. Uh, you know, with Daniel Bryan, it gives him a good push. It gives him a good, you know, it gives him a push in what he wants to do. And you know, it, it's quite clear now they want they they're pushing Daniel Bryan to the main event, um, and they want him to be the likes of CM Punk. They want him to be the likes of John Cena. They do see something in him, which is really, really good. Um, also, there was a promo um, with regards to Wade Barrett. So, he will be returning sometime soon. I can only assume next week on Raw. Very good. I actually really wanted to see Wade Barrett against Undertaker last year rather than Triple H. I think, you know, the whole streak thing, I think they need to push that in regards to that. They, want, they really need to push young talent for the streak. You know, and I think Wade Barrett is one of them guys that need to push. Wade Barrett now, hopefully he'll be debuting next week. I really hope so. Either that, I don't know whether he's on the Raw brand or SmackDown brand because it's all completely changed now. They, they're now doing away with the Raw Super Show, which is really good. I really hated the Raw Super Show. I didn't I didn't particularly like it myself. So uh, it's really good that they've got rid of that. Um, also, this is really the first review that I've made with Raw being three hours. And, uh, yeah, I don't, I, 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 yes and no, I think the problem is, is the advertisements, there's way too much advertising, I mean, there's about three advertisements, breaks in one match, um, on Sky TV, it's ridiculous, 
the way you know there's so many advertisements and it, it it kind of stops the flow of the match i would like to see a break um at the start of the match and a break after the match just keep the whole match forward but they just break it you know there's i think it was three or four breaks for the um the uh the christian and alberto del rio match which is just it, it really didn't really uh work out very much so guys i'm really approaching the 15 minute mark um i can make videos that are longer than 15 minutes but obviously uh I've said everything that needs to be said. Um, so yeah. Oh, and another thing. Also, CM Punk interrupts the end of Raw. He um, basically it's just a repeat of what he did last week. Uh, he, uh, John, uh, John Cena grabs Big Show on top of his shoulders, and CM Punk pushes him down. And once again, CM Punk gets heat. So guys, this was my Raw review um, for this week. So guys, please subscribe, comment, please subscribe to Enter the Arena US, and please subscribe to, and also please follow me on Twitter. So this is Jerboss2K9 signing out.